honored to host a very heartwarming session today evening. The session is with a very, very interesting young initiative done by some youngsters, all mechanical engineers and, and, and technologists with the, who have built a collective called Mohan. Before I introduce Mohan and Mohan's story, a little bit about myself. I'm a serial media tech entrepreneur who works with one focus in mind. How can we enable the smallest MSMEs the nano entrepreneurs of Asia to become to become absolutely independent. How can we enable their process? How can we build them up? And one of the, the three things, the three pillars of our work is education, engagement, empowerment, using this world of digital commerce. So digital democracy is what we're aiming for. And we believe that we would like our journey to be only about enabling the youth of tomorrow. On that note, let us introduce one of the companies that I'm proud to be able to introduce today, which is Mohan Collective. During 2019, I came to Kalimpong district and I saw the beauty of this region and I saw the Himalayan peaks, I saw Panchanjanga. because these villages are just near the nature. And seeing the rural lifestyle, and I was very much inspired and have a deep connection with the people and the land and found a home. It was a life-changing experience for me and I felt a strong connection with Kalimpong. Hi, my name is Arunav Dam. I was born in Guwahati, Assam. We have seen many negative things in the hills, like the challenges of the youth. They don't find good opportunities to work, to generate income. They don't see anything in the village that uh, they will get income from. And then youths are not really engaged in social works, like they are mostly focused on either earning money or like some other you know form of entertainment but like socially they're coming together as a community uh, that is as a youth they don't understand the value there are so many tribes but most of the tribes they don't speak their own language i feel that it is a part of our identity so that is very important and critical There are a lot of things are getting lost slowly, slowly. From the very beginning, like I was working individually, I was traveling in different communities and then our founders, they were also exploring on their own. And through our experiences, we already were coming to the same vision and same goal. And then we finalized that we will make uh, Muhan, we will form Muhan. So we wanted to do a tourism which is much more uh, with the community and helping with the community, working with the community. So we wanted to make something very different. The tourism has to be very thoughtful, uh, carefully planned, and it should be helping for the conservation of the culture and make tourism a sustainable based tourism. And then empowering the communities that they can do something on their own. not forgetting our roots, our agricultural practices. We want a long-term vision where the place can become like a model place where people can come and learn a lot of things like zero-based philosophy. Our food habits and a lot of learning can happen and these uh, communities can exchange their knowledge in between them. So Koledai is an annual harvest festival that happens in Parentar village. This festival is happening every year.
in the earlier days like 20 25 years back there is a common pattern where from the neighbor all the neighbors they come together to help it is basically a celebration of the harvest In Penenta, they still practice that bar barter system and this was also helping to ease the process because paddy harvesting is, is a time-taking work. And after the uh, whole work was done, they used to celebrate, they used to dance, they used to do dhanats uh, on top of the, you know, of the harvested paddy. So people knew, uh, needed all these activities to help them get motivated and make it like a fun process. In Parentar, when these practices were dying, so the first event we had created Koledai. So our partners from the village, they had this experience and this memory. And then we thought that Koledai is a concept which is coming from this village itself. Parentar community, when we told them that we want to do a harvest festival, uh, so they were also very interested. So the first event we did it in this way and it was very successful. And slowly people are generating revenue also. Now so many homestays have started. There are a lot of uh, people, young people who go outside to work and to find employment. And that's the reason that uh, we do this kind of things so that they can come back and you know see that their livelihood is possible from here only. We see that, that these things are slowly aligning with our vision uh, and people are getting becoming more and more responsible. They are proud of their place. amazing sustainability can be fun sustainability doesn't have to be a responsibility alone it can be engaging it can be entertaining and it can be empowering and this is what team collectively mohan has tried to prove today we have with us vicky sharma and anurab dham of uh, mohan i am giving a brief introduction because they've done a fairly good job of this themselves they decided to go in and use the local festivals, the festivals that were dwindling out, the festivals that were dying out to create an awareness for the region. As they mentioned, they wanted to put the, put the region on the map again. They wanted it to be fun for travelers, as well as a livelihood generation practice for the locals. Now they're in their third year. 
Let's hear from them. What are the other festivals they do? Because I surely want to visit one of them. And let them take us through a virtual tour of the terraced hills, the magical festivals that they create, and how sustainability is a part of their DNA. Welcome, Vicky. Welcome, Anurab. Thank you for joining us. I know you're joining us from a very remote region. Can you tell me where you are right now? Uh, now we are in Kwati. Okay. So we just traveled back from uh, Arunachal Pradesh. Where were you all so, in Arunachal? So we went to a very remote place called Zemitham. So it's in uh, Tawang district. Yes. It's near Indochina border. So yeah, so we were, uh, it's our, it, it was our first visit. And uh, yeah, so it was really nice and it was snowing. <laughs> so a lot of things happened. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, very like we had to squeeze in uh, all the timings uh, to align, you know, for this meeting and for this session also, and for this journey also that we were we had to do. A lot was a lot of traveling was happening. So finally, we uh, are settled now in Guwahati for for today. Again, we will be traveling. Thank you. Your most of the time you spend traveling, from what I remember. Well, so just give me a brief about how. Uh, Mohan was formed, and what are the festivals that you all do? So uh, Mohan uh, actually started uh, like officially from uh, 2021. So, but we have been individually working on our own, like uh, on our own level, and mostly experimenting, I can say. So uh, that's how we we had. But in 2021. Uh, how it formalized was that we started uh, with parental community. So parental community is like a very important, uh, plays a very important role in Muhan because uh, we got the right community, you know, and uh, that is very much important for us. We tried a lot of things, but uh, the most important aspect was the community and parental gave us that platform to, you know, uh, in, in like, try out these ideas and they were very much responsive. So the first festival we did was Asar Pandra, uh, which was a plantation festival. And uh, it was a very small festival and done with the community itself. And it was just an experiment that we can do it or not. But uh, after doing it, we had the confidence that it's, uh, it's going to work and everything was done in a zero waste uh, way. So it, it is the basically the model that uh, you know becoming bigger and bigger you know with holiday festival and everything we do can i stop you for a moment because i'd love to see a few present do you have a presentation of us up and down yes yes yes, yes can have. you take us so let me just describe it while he pulls up the um pulls up the presentation um parantar just close your eyes and imagine the space dotted green dotted between green trees this sienna toned paddy fields of parantar, they turn into this beautiful um, base where the, the earth is just wet, perfect for the sowing festival. It's a quiet hamlet in the border of India, India and Bhutan in West Bengal's Kalimpong district. It overlooks the blue gray mountains. Occasionally on a good day, you might even be able to see the Kanchanjanda. There's a nip in the air and there's a burst of activity when the Asar Pandar happens. Suddenly this quiet village wakes up at the advent of the harvest season. And the villagers, mostly comprising of Rai people, make out banners from Poplin roof, uh, their traditional food stack up and they get ready for soul. This is basically the scene you will see when you get to them and where they're all getting ready to put the seeds of tomorrow in their soils. On these terrace fields, that's where Mohan and Team Mohan set up their festival. Please have a look at the images and tell me what you think of them. Please go. Okay, so we have a small presentation. Uh, so I will take you through uh, from the very beginning, like how we started and uh, all the things. And also, of course, the beauty of uh, parental, like how aptly you described. So, Light from the very beginning, you know, the Mohan, uh, the word, uh, is the presentation uh, visible? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, and okay. in those brief glimpses, I had my mouth open. Sorry. 
<laughs> so mohan is basically uh, the word itself is very uh, strong and important for us it's it's a, like a rare word in nepali which means uh, source so usually for source of water they use this word uh, but it, it, a, a, in a general term it is basically source so whatever work uh, we have been doing uh, in a way is kind of you know revolving around that core concept like how uh, we protect this uh, basically source of everything the source of knowledge the source of uh, our connection to the nature and all these things in, in, is kind of a driving force for us and like i told it started in 2021 officially and it's it's a, we work in a social enterprise model so it's a for profit but we work uh, in a lot of social aspects as well and then uh, it is uh, it works as a collective because a lot of people from various uh, you know backgrounds are involved with us so it's not just three four founders but there are a lot of lot of uh, youths from this area who are involved with us so from different factors and different uh, backgrounds they are coming in and this exchange is happening in a rural platform so how we all can come together to uh, exchange ideas you know people like us who are uh, in a, from a educated background or have seen the you know world outside uh, and work together with the rural communities to bring something very uh, unique so that is how this collective model is coming up and but we uh, our main uh, channel that we use is uh, community tourism that is our uh, we can say it is our medium uh, but of course we have different different backgrounds but the medium we use is community tourism so that is how muhan is and this rural tourism uh, aspect is uh, important part because we work in villages and we try to see how we can uh, depict the authentic lifestyle of the communities without you know doing something very artificial and using the things how is it is it is more like a conservative kind of a approach that we are taking and storytelling is of course a very important part uh, of our process because uh, right now we live in this communities and we uh, are from this community so we have a very individual and very personal uh, aspect uh, to tell about this community so uh, that's why the storytelling that is the stories that are coming up is coming up uh, uh, in more uh, genuine way because it's uh, well, because it's coming from our personal experiences as well and we uh, take it as very important aspect that uh, tourism needs right now and so one of the most important uh, festivals like uh, you have seen in the video also is uh, Kholidai uh, festival so Kholidai uh, is a harvest festival that happens in uh, this beautiful village uh, uh, of Perantar and this is a celebration of harvest and uh, because the 90 percent of the uh, community and the land is used in har uh, paddy so paddy is a very important uh, you know aspect of uh, parental village so that's how like we want to promote these activities these uh, practices because in plains it's very common to have paddy culture and paddy farming but in mountains in hills it's slowly dying out and that's kind of a serious concern for us also but parental as a community they are protecting the the culture and now that's how it really needs to be motivated and this is how we can do uh, uh, in a way to motivate this culture and also you know uh, use it as a form of tourism as well so the next thing uh, in this picture you can see this uh, elder woman who are dancing uh, on the on the patty so this is actually uh, when we were talking to the uh, elder people of the community they were showing how uh, they used to dance in those days so this is um, used to happen after every harvest they used to uh, get together they used to help each other in the work and after the work was done uh, they would dance and uh, dancing in this way on the paddy that is harvested also is the process you know to get the grains uh, separated from the uh, from the in the from the husk you know so that is how it was also used uh, so it has two uh, uh, things that was working out one was it was easing out the hard work that was going on and also helping in the processing 
So, so these kind of practices we got to know when we were talking to the community, and we thought that this is a very unique, uh, you know, culture that is coming from the village, coming from the parent or community itself. So this is uh, this whole kind of process is known as dai in Nepali. So, and kole is basically a rice porridge that that was made after you know the newly harvested rice was given. So this rice porridge was given to the uh, you know the people who who were there working all day. So these two simple things uh, we used it as a reference, and this was this came from the community itself. This whole idea. So we thought that this is a unique thing that is coming from the community, and we, this is how the you know the name of Kolidai Festival came up. So you can see this whole uh, uh, this land. This is a uh, basically. After the harvest, this open land is being used for the festival. Every year we did do the festival in this area only, too, and we make the design accordingly to the shape of this uh, paddy field. And you can see we use uh, like very sustainable and natural, uh, you know, designs. So, and we have uh, a design uh, group studio interview from uh, Gantok who help us and conceptualize. Uh, the design you know every year and make it and everybody is in the process to make it more and more sustainable and zero waste and so like uh, i told that muhan is a collective uh, so a lot of people from different uh, backgrounds they come together for this uh, this kind of thing so studio interview is is a very like powerful example because they create such beautiful designs using simple uh, elements like clothes bamboos and uh, hey, whatever is available in that area, That's and so you can, yeah, and so you can see that uh, we have this kind of uh, like dance forms and folk forms, which are again very rare, uh, like very less people are practicing. So we also try to give platform to those kind of groups. So in uh, Darjeeling and Kalimpong, where this festival is based, there are a lot of. Uh, different Nepali communities who are actually different tribal communities who have their own language, have their own culture and have their own folk forms. So we try to give a platform for these hill communities and uh, we also try to give platform to all other tribes who are present in this area to, to have a, like a confluence. So the whole day, these kind of things, uh, these kind of practices are shown and uh, the, the first, uh, like in the daytime, it is for the cultural and the folk events. So you can see the pictures. Uh, so all different communities of the hills and the nearby areas. And I love the way they bring together their culture. They're diverse, yes. they're so different, and yet they bring together and they come into one. They're preserving what they've lost. Some of these, if I'm right, also come from Bhutan. Some of them also come from the old Indo-Tibetan tribes. Yes, yes, yes. So there are a lot of conference in this area. So basically, North Bengal is uh, like a huge conference it happens from all sides, you know, Bhutan, Nepal, and also from Northeast. So all these influences are present. So it is a very rich uh, area to represent culturally. And in the evening, we have like uh, different artists like uh, who come from. We invite them from different areas, like from Nepal, from uh, you know, from Northeast, uh, so uh, who have, uh, who are creating music, which is, you know, uh, more towards like our roots, more towards uh, our folk, uh, you know, roots. So that kind of artist we usually curate. And then the, in the evening, we have this uh, kind of artist. So you can see this is Siam Ensemble in the picture who are from Manipur. So. Uh, different different kind of uh, artists we try to cu curate who are you know uh, doing something significant uh, for their for their music of their region and we also have like uh, different workshops uh, during the festival which some of the workshops are directed for the community uh, like if the community can learn something uh, can exchange some knowledge and some of the workshops are directed you know for uh, the general audience who is coming to the festival. So there are like food workshops, there are like paper making workshops, menstrual hygiene, so different workshops every time we curate. And another important aspect of our festival is uh, it's a zero waste festival. 
and completely we make this festival zero waste by using natural resources and local alternatives and uh, most of the local alternatives are you know creatively found by the community itself so you can see like um, this person having a soup uh, in a bamboo uh, you know kind of a bowl so this is an alternative that they came up with and we just give them this scenario that you have to uh, you don't have to use, uh, you know, plastic disposables or things like that. You can use something very natural. So they always come up with different, different ideas. And you can see like simple solutions like using, uh, you know, leaves as plates uh, can be an important solution, which people were doing when there were no plastics and no disposable items. They were doing things like this only. So we are trying to, you know, revive this tradition as well. Interesting. I love the way you've done it in the sense that not only are you extremely sustainable, but you're also being extremely sensitive to the community aspects and the way you're creating reach. Now, tell us how you came by Parantar and why Parantar. Actually, you have mentioned that. But how did you come yeah. to Parantar? Can you tell us about it? And please tell us, it's the third year. This year, you saw 3,000 people come to party there. How was it? Yeah. What was the impact? Both uh, on their livelihood and the sustainability. So how we came to Parenter was like um, like one of our founders, he uh, belongs from that area. So he lives close by to the village, but uh, like he was, he was the first person who got uh, in contact with the village because he is from that area. So he knew this place and and saw the open, uh, you know, paddy fields all the time. He was traveling through the area, and even we also traveled through the area and saw this open paddy fields and this flat land. And there was something very warm about the place and very nostalgic, you know. Some way or the other, the paddy fields always, uh, you know, evoke some kind of nostalgia, yeah. Yeah. some kind of, you know, beauty. And uh, like I told, you no, know, in plains it's very common. There are huge, huge farms and paddy fields but in mountain it's so rare you know? <laughs> like seeing just parenter doing a uh, paddy field and like all the lands covered in green paddy was something very special for us you know and we knew that in hills uh, these cultures are related to paddy uh, very closely like you know in nepali only there is a festival called asar pandra which i will talk about later and this asar pandra is a festival where the uh, people start planting the rice so th the date is marked uh, and it's asar means the month and 15 is the date uh, when you have to start planting the rice so a lot of these rituals are connected to paddy farming so paddy farming is uh, not just farming but it is also a very significant cultural element so that's why we saw that parentar uh, as a village uh, is already ahead uh, in a way because they are conserving this culture and secondly, they and wanted the to, do... to start enjoying your life. So, uh, Parenter wanted to do tourism. They wanted to start tourism, and uh, they had come in contact with us. And they they were completely new. They had done nothing about tourism. Tourism was happening in the other areas, but Parenter was still untouched. So, when the community leaders and the youth leaders came up, uh, came with us and talked to us that. Maybe we can do something uh, about uh, our village and if we can promote our village, then we naturally it was uh, that we can have to promote, you know, this uh, agricultural uh, patterns and agricultural things. And uh, uh, our founder, he had a grand meeting with uh, all the 79 households of the village and he explained that what, what we can do and all the vision. And from the very beginning only, the whole community was, you know, on board and... Uh, is a very united community and being such, such a strong united and an ambitious community gave us the push that uh, parent or community can go ahead in the long run because Koledai festival um, has it's the third year and it has become so big but still they are open for such ideas some of the ideas are very new for them also but they still are you know open and uh, because of the ambition that they have they take all these modern ideas as well, you know. So they are always ready to experiment and uh, try new things. 
that's heartwarming. That's really, really heartwarming to see that there is tradition with a blend of contemporary and understanding that our youth have to go ahead. That's really, really well done. And I think that's what you bring to them. You bring the tomorrow to them. So uh, three years down, 2023, what was the impact of Koledai and Asar Panda? So, uh, like, Koledai and Asar Pandra, if one thing very importantly has at least put parent or a very small community on the picture. Like people know about this uh, community. People are talking about this community. And uh, another important thing is, like I told, people are proud of their place. So one thing is very important is that in the rural communities, people usually... Uh, they don't think that it is something very special, you know, that our place is something very special. But now people in parenthood, of course, they have this pride that uh, it is a special place. It is a special land that we have. And it is very important that we conserve this place. So this is one of the most important thing, uh, you know, that uh, I think we are achieving. And uh, another thing is that, like, now it is setting an example for other communities as well, that it is not uh, that you don't have to have a lot of, uh, you know, a uh, lot of extra external resources to uh, make ch change happen, you know, make uh, your, uh, make promote your community or, you know, put your community on the map, you know, it can be done uh, very, you know, authentically, organically and with whatever you have, because when we started Kholedai, uh, it was on a very, very, shoestring budget you know so all the community they raised some fund and uh, we utilized that fund to start and uh, like that is how we started and now it has in the third year it has become really you know uh, it has become uh, you know it has come to a good scale and people know about it and people are always talking about it and so many communities are getting inspired you know even in assam even in in nearby our areas they are thinking that yes, we can do something. We can use our resources. We can use our people. It's not always, you know, funding. It's not always government support, and all these things will eventually come. But initially, you have to, you know, take the stand. So that is one of the most biggest impact that these festivals are creating. True, but you've also impacted in numbers. So in numbers in your third year, how many people attended uh, Koledai? So uh, number wise, uh, this time, I think we have uh, 3000 to 3500 people uh, who came and uh, this is like daily visitors and then registration wise also it was really, really uh, good because all the slots were sold out and there was not single uh, free space in the homestays of the village. Uh, so almost like 150 people, they signed up uh like like they booked uh, and stayed in the village and then of course there were uh, almost 15 uh, like 2000 to 3000 people daily visitors that they came uh in the village and there were almost like uh, uh i think 35 to 40 stalls and uh, almost all the stalls uh, the local stalls did an average uh business of 10 to 15000 per day so that was also a really significant, uh, you know, revenue for the people who are keeping stalls like food stalls and product stalls, all organic things that the community was putting up. So that's very nice and organic way. Uh, if you had to pinpoint your success, five top points to pinpoint, pinpoint your success, what would you say are your five key steps to pinpoint it? Um, like, like I told, one is, of course, pride uh, that that came up uh, like as a success for us. And then uh, secondly, uh, how can I say, like, practically, like, uh, we can show why we can see that, you know, community tourism and zero waste festivals are possible. And and like other things is that um, that's. I exactly cannot pinpoint a lot of lot of things. Okay, so let me help. Let me help you with this yeah, because yeah. we brainstormed on this, and when we were isolating the factors, we kind of, I felt this was it. One I think is you'll set up a community-owned model. 
the uh, I cannot pronounce it, but the N U. Um, give me a second. Uh, it's called the Nualo Umange Welfare Society, which is a local society. They came. They became the partners, the owners, and the partners. So it became a community-owned, community-operated event, and I think that's what it was. I think pride is what you stirred. It was an after effect. It wasn't the beginning. The fact that you also took traditional existing practices that were there and said, look, this is it. Can we now celebrate our identity? You did it at a time where India was first time looking at its own identity. And I think this is when they said, whoa, we didn't know we were this beautiful. We just thought this was old fashioned. But you know what? The world is now looking at us and saying, wow, how much fun are you having? Correct me if I'm wrong with both the points. No, it's very, very like accurate, and uh, that's what we think. Yeah, especially Tell me with about the, the community-owned model. Tell me about yes. this. So, very important aspect is, of course, uh, the community and the society. That is, parenta no loma welfare society. So, they are like the key, uh, you know, stakeholders and the key organizers of this festival. So, basically, uh, in community tourism. Uh, of course, there are agencies like us who are providing, you know, the modern uh, context or the technical help and helping them to promote. But in locally, uh, very important are like civil societies, like Parenta Noloma Welfare Society. So they are formed uh, to, you know, overlook the tourism and the welfare aspects of the society. And they are the driving factor and take the leadership uh, for all the mobilization that is happening. Uh, in the community. So in that sense, uh, they have this, uh, you know, uh, the ownership in the sense is that they are getting uh, this, uh, you know, uh, they are organizing this festival and it's becoming bigger and bigger. So they are getting more and more confidence uh, in the sense that, yes, we can do things like that. And that is how, uh, you know, the ownership is coming. And because in other other places, uh, festivals like this happen everywhere. It's a very common nowadays in, in India. But usually uh, there are other kind of models where, uh, you know, group of people uh, take a model and just, uh, you know, put it in the context of an environment, which is uh, maybe a, in a rural setting or in a natural setting. But usually the community doesn't have that much ownership. Uh, so that's why Koleda is special, you know, so because most, uh, you know, uh, aspects are covered by the community, everything they are doing, you know, they are organizing, they are hosting, they are providing the uh, the food, whatever, you know, so that's, that's how, you know, so many aspects are coming up. So that's why people appreciate Koleda, I think, because they see uh, actually, you know, the community coming up and doing all this. I absolutely agree with you. And I think that's what was the success. I've seen a lot of external people come, helicopter, do these events, and it lasts a year or two, and then it, it disappears. But y'all are doing two segments a year. So now please tell us about Asar Pandar, please. Yes, yes, sure. Yeah, so Asar Pandra is like the beginning of the cycle, as we can see. It is basically starts uh, when we start the planting season, and um, we are promoting it as as a tourism event as well, where uh, people from different uh, walks they come and come like they work with the community and they celebrate and they help in the paddy plantation. You know, so there are some like pictures that you can see of the event. As in the right hand side, you can see that. Um, uh, you know, he's uh, starting the offerings. So, in the beginning, they have to offer, you know, uh, to the land that uh, land we are praying to you that you give a good, uh, you know, uh, reap from your, uh, like, the whatever we are planting. You know, so they ask the permission of the land, the mother land, and the mother earth uh, for, for you know, a good harvest and a good uh, plantation. So that's how it starts. So it's a, it's a very important aspect. And uh, 
So uh, that's how, and you can see these uh, pictures where we are planting, uh, where people are planting their uh, saplings. And there are like different pictures of the event. So another aspect is that like, you know, nowadays uh, our youths and our children are also not uh, engaged in, in this simple activities where we are getting connected to our soil, like playing in the mud and uh, playing in the rain, you know. So one of our founders, uh, Dominic, he always says that nowadays we our, we don't allow our children to go in the rain, go in the sun, uh, go in the mud, you know. So we are like, please don't go, and we are always forbidding them. But in in events like this, uh, which which used to happen from a long time. Uh, everybody, like the whole generation, would be there on the on the mud, on the rain, you know, completely open to the nature, and this created such an important bond uh, with with the mother nature. And this is how this is what we basically celebrate in Asar Pandra, you know, that uh, there are no inhibitions uh, that that we feel at that time, you know, completely we're connected. And we touch the soil, we feel the soil. And we, in a very fun way, we we plant the, the rice, and this is again done completely in a zero waste way. You can see in the right hand side they are making these leaf uh, plates, and then this banner we have used it for <laughs> like two three years until now. This has been made by hand, and it's made on a cloth banner. So we keep using this banner. So these are uh, simple simple things. It's uh, it's nothing very grand like holiday, but it is a Celebration of a very important thing that the bond that I was I was telling. I think it's a beautiful way to actually celebrate your traditions and the same way revive it. And you're right. I would also say don't don't go out to play in the rain, but you're right. This makes us stronger as there's nothing wrong to do it. And you've been a proof of this because right in the middle of COVID, 2021, when the whole world had stopped, you kind of started reviving this. Now, there are other things that you do, and I don't want that to go under the radar. You talked about how you create uh, tourism, your community tourism model, where you celebrate one-of-a-kind immersive journeys, okay? So I know about living in the forest, the untold stories of Singalia Forest. You want to tell us about some of these uh, consciously designed immersive tours? Yes, of course. So... so... Uh, living with the forest uh, is again a very uh, different kind of a program like uh, as if we compare it to like Koledai or Asar Pandra which is more about celebration and uh, it's more like about the fun aspects but uh, living with the forest is a little bit towards our educational uh, you know um, you know part that we have as Muhan also so like educating people about some of the very like important things and again uh, putting out a narrative basically so living with the forest is is basically based on our experiences and the narrative that uh, the, the people who are living you know nearby these protected areas or like in the deep forests or important forest and natural areas uh, how they were conserving the forest for such a long time and how they were living with the forest so basically now we are not uh we like most of the civilization has moved out of the forest and we are very far from the forest but you know, the people who are still living with the forest have a very important knowledge and very important you know history and heritage that we have to learn and uh, we have to uh you know exchange from them because there are a lot of crucial things that uh, that is hidden in that knowledge so that's how this whole concept came up and uh, we wanted to show that people are not always, you know, negative, you know, we, uh, because the larger narrative is that uh, if people are in the forest, they will damage the forest. But that's not, uh, that's not the usual thing which we have observed because we are also staying in, uh, you know, nearby protected areas, nearby forest areas. So we see that people have been living very intricately uh, and our ancestors, they had a very good knowledge that how we can coexist and there that ecological knowledge is very important and so we cannot just right away uh, you know uh, you know put uh, that narrative out of the construct 
context that uh, people are always, you know, harmful for the forest, but people were actually managing the forest for such a long, long time. So through Living with the Forest, we would try to project this uh, narrative through different, different activities that we curate uh, like in a, in a five day to six day span of time. At this uh, workshop, uh, we can tell it like it's a workshop and it's a, like an experiential journey. And we try to do it in different, different communities. So the first event that we did was in 2022, it, we did it in Neura Valley. So uh, our uh, base is in Samsung, which is uh, just, uh, you know, in the fringe of Lower Neura Valley National Park. So the first event was done in the fringe, in a fringe village of Lower Neura Valley National Park. And we, uh, th that was our pilot uh, event. And the second event, we did it in uh, Singalila National Park. That's in a small community called Sepi. And uh, we try to identify like different, different resource persons from the community who have like critical knowledge, you know, like about maybe medicinal plants, uh, you know, maybe uh, there can be shamans involved who uh, through their shamanic practice can show that how, mm, you know, we are related, you know, to the nature and how, uh, because in shamanic practices and the uh, ancient religious practices, they used to, uh, you know, just worship the nature, you know, different, different, uh, aspects of the nature was worship. It can be stones, it can be rivers, it can be, uh, you know, uh, trees. So this true shamanism also, we, we try to show that how we are connected. And then there are shepherds who are a very important part uh, of this knowledge uh, that is uh, that these people have. Shepherds, they, live, they used to live in the forest uh, for a longer time, if for six months, seven months, they used to live in the forest with their, you know, cows, with their uh, animals. And uh, they would have deep knowledge because they live uh, lived their life in, for a prolonged period in this uh, forest. And in a way, indirectly, they were also uh, managing the forest in a way. So this kind of important context uh, we try to bring up with uh, living with the forest. So you can see some pictures. Uh, so in the left hand side, uh, we have uh, uh, a young guy from Sepi who is uh, doing, uh, you know, uh, he has started his own dairy and uh, is doing, making churpis. Churpi is like a hard cheese. So we also try to focus on sustainable livelihood, which is again a key aspect of the, uh, of the program. We try to show that even with these challenges, like there, there are a lot of challenges if you are staying nearby a forest area. Uh, so even with this, these challenges, how we can, how the people of these areas are creating sustainable livelihoods. So Karan Mukhya, uh, uh, we, we have shown him as an example, um, like how he is creating a livelihood. Then there, on the right hand side, we have, uh, you know, Bobby Chan Rai. So he's showing, uh, he took a class of silviculture. Uh, so silviculture can be like a technical thing also, but we try to sh show it from a, uh, from a ground perspective, like from how a person from a ground. So because he is, uh responsible for producing uh, saplings uh, for the for the forest department so he supplies saplings uh, for the forest department so he knows a lot about uh, the forest plants and the whole process you know of uh, caring nurturing and uh, you know planting and all these things so he took a workshop about that so even bobby Chan rai is a perfect example of uh, creating a sustainable livelihood which is uh, completely based on the environment that he is living in and that is ecologically sound and not, uh, you know, creating any negative impact on the, on the environment. And the, you can see there are other things uh, like on the left hand side, we, we also take the participants to uh, the deep areas of the forest to understand like how the forest is. Like we can see the picture, it's, uh, it's a picture from Singalila National Park. So uh, we take them to the trail and we also give them the space to connect with the nature and, uh, you know, have a space where they can find their, you know, uh, roots in the place. And on the right hand side, you can see uh, this is Miss Paulina Rai from Nepal. So she is showing how you can make, uh, uh, you can cook a lichen. So this is a edible lichen, which is, uh, again, uh, coming from the, Kirati community, so they have this knowledge that even lichens can be eaten and they have very medicinal properties. These lichens can be found in like high 
a higher altitude forest. So this kind of uh, knowledge is again uh, coming from the ancestors, like how they had understood the nature. So these are different uh, pictures from the community, uh, from the uh, program. From the right hand side, you can see uh, a local healer and the medicine man. So he's showing uh, all the different kind of medicines that he has made. And he's also showing his farm uh, where he has planted different kind of medicines. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, and in this in this person, uh, they are like two, three group of uh, people who have a very important role. They make uh, smokeless chulas. Oh, so wow. these are like, yes. So these are improved chulas, which reduce like reduces you know the wastage of fuel loot. A very important thing. So they teach it uh, to the community, and they also make it for the community. So they are trained master trainers. So we had a session on that also. Can I ask yeah. you one question? Okay. Yeah. How um, I would love to hear from the community. So you had a lovely uh, a promo on Kolai, uh, on Kolai Dai by Roshan. Let's hear it from the community before we go to the next session. Because I'd like them to understand, I'd like people to understand um, what is the impact. Someone on my Facebook just asked, what is the impact on the community? So I think hearing in Roshan's word might really give that answer. So can you, uh, Yash, play that play that uh, video? हमरो परिंटर गाँव चिंदई ना चिनी ने गाँव तेरे त्यो गाँव लाई लिए रा आज जून से वड़ा हमले आर्बिस फेस्टिवल करी रहे कुछ हों और तीसरी को दजे आज धेरे ही बंदा धेरे ही मानसिले परिंटर लाई चिंदन सके कुछ हों यूने सभी बंदा ठुलो गुरो खोले दाई मंदा गाड़ी है मिले असार पंद्रह फेस्टिवल गौर सों को नहीं देखी ना दाई ना यो कास दो यो बेला अल्लाह रे यो जो बान यो दूसरा फेस्टिवल लेके परिंग टार लाइक किस शिकायत है कुछ अपनी हमले जून परिकार को यो गांव में ये वड़ा रूलर टूरिज्म को लाइक बनी ट्राई करी रहे कुछ हमले पहले ही देखी है हमले सोचे को कुरा रहा है इस तारे इस तारे हमले सीख दे आए रहे कुछ हम गेस्ट कौसेरी रखने कौसेरी गेस्ट ला हैंडल करने समाज मिले रहा मिले वड़ा गांव में स्कूल हूँ पर्चा बने रहा स्कूल पनी है मिले बनाए कुछ और जहाँ आइले देरे बंदे देरे नानी है ले शिक्षा हासिल करी रहे कुछ और गांव में जीरो वेस्ट को काम साथ ही ये वाला गांव लाई मॉडल विलेज बनाऊं ने प्रयास करी रही कुछ हों रह यो जीरो वेस्ट फेस्टिवल में आए कॉलेज दे आर्मीज़ फेस्टिवल में आए रह तब ये ले देरे एन्जॉय करने उनसे बनी है मैं आस अपनी साथ ही कुछ हों रह तब ये संपूर्ण संपूर्ण लाई हमी गांव ले बासी साथे साथे हमरो यो फेस्टिवल को आज ही पनी सफल बनाओ ना मसाइट अपुरे दिन हों जब बनी हमी आस अपुनी साथ से कुछ हों I think you should come here and if you have ever been here please share this so that everyone who have not been to here they can come here and let me tell you 
other places are overrated this is underrated and you must come here otherwise you are missing on a lot amazing so i think that should put every question to rest and say this is what we've done and this is how we're making a mark so it's just goes beyond just the event uh the experience people have reviving of culture reviving the pride bringing back the youth but most importantly it's even created spaces it's worked on education it has a long term goal and i think that's what makes a big difference um what what next for you what next for both of you i know we have a very quiet wiki we see him only in the visuals and a quiet uh, video name tag here but wiki and you have a lot in, in common and a similar vision but for your what next as mohan uh, what next for you as a human being also are not you're you're on mute Arna? Arna? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, now uh, I can I can hear Arna, now I can hear you yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. So what next for you? So uh like but these things uh, that we have started already we are trying to you know make it uh, perfect and make it improve it uh this year also like uh, you know all these things have become like a calendar event for us like holiday asar panja so and then in last year also we started some new programs like uh uh one important event that we did was in uh, totopara so totopara uh, is uh, is a very like a um, how do you say important for the country also because toto is a very rare tribe there are like very less population uh, i think 1600 or 17, 1700 totos are there who stay only in totopara so uh, we curated and tried tried experimenting uh, like last year so it's called tumtum kamu so we do like a, a workshop so can you see the screen uh no one minute no let, it's okay. a blank screen let me try, let me try. yeah can you see it now yes yeah so this uh, uh this is again like a uh, trying out some of the models uh, that we had uh, you know implemented before uh, in a different community so totopara is a new community that we have started from the last year and we did a very in depth uh, workshop to understand the toto life the toto culture and again using resource persons and knowledge keepers from the community itself and then at the end we did a small zero waste event you know to create our awareness that zero waste uh, event uh, can be done uh, in in a very organic in, in a very low low cost model also so that is uh, something uh, new uh, for this year also we will try to promote it and uh, like you can see this is uh, a picture of dhaniram toto so he is a padma shri award winner so he uh, is responsible for giving a uh, toto language a script so he had worked uh, dedicatedly even being uh, not a very uh, you know in the traditional sense educated but uh, still with uh, without a conventional education system also he had so much knowledge and so much you know uh you know dedication for his culture that uh, his uh, efforts had been recognized and he had made this uh, script for this uh, for this uh, real language and he has done in depth work about his culture so uh, he was also uh, like a, a big resource person for this workshop and then we had different different uh, resource persons you can see in the left hand side is toby anderson so he was uh, working with dhaniram toto to give the technical support in phonetics so he's uh, basically from the lingu he's a linguist so he yeah, gave his technical support so he was also there as a resource person like how they 
uh, came up with this uh, uh, script and what are the unique aspects of this language. And uh, in the right hand side, you can see Rita Toto, who was like the first uh, woman to graduate from the Toto community because uh, Toto community was really backward uh, to the very recent times. Only few uh, number of people are have edu like got you know higher education, and in case of females, it's very less. So Rita Roto was also another resource person, and she shared her stories like how she has uh, you know what were the challenges and how people took uh, and how people got inspired from her you know from uh, the girls from her community, and then we had an introduction with the shaman of the community like how they uh, got into shamanism and how their practices are there and interestingly in totopara people still refer to the uh, shaman first then going to the doctor so everything has to be uh, gone like first they they are still believing in that ancient practice so yeah so a lot of things uh, we do and then another program that we do is budding roots so it's mostly done with school children and like kids basically and we try to uh, combine the principles of permaculture uh, with, uh, you know, the uh, with with the community knowledge that uh, that we are talking about, all the knowledge keepers and all the knowledge that we can see a lot of permaculture principles getting implemented practically without, you know, the community. They don't know what is permaculture, but they are still practicing it. And I think permaculture, in a way, has taken uh, influence uh, from these ideas itself. So in a very organically, we can show the school children and we take them to like remote places. You know, these pictures have been taken from one of our programs that we did with school. And uh, so we took them to a very remote place called Tode, which is like one of the last villages of Kalimpong. Yeah. And all different, different aspects came up, you know, like they were shown, uh, talked, uh, shown about the stinging nettle, how you can make fiber from stinging nettle. Uh, about seed right, saving. What was that? Say that again. So stinging nettle is like a plant that we get in the hills. And there is a practice where you make fibers from that uh, plant. So it is oh. usually practiced in like uh, Himalayan areas. Uh, it is also a very like a uh, rare. You know, what practice. is it called? Stinging nettle. Okay. Oh, stinging nettle. Oh, what they make into yes, the yes, yes. soup and all that. Oh yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they, yeah. So they used to make clothes out of it uh, before. Still in Nepal, they practice uh, and still they make clothes. Uh, but in in our parts, it's very rare. So only one woman was there who did it like after eighteen or twenty years for this workshop. So it was really emotional for us also. But it was yeah. So a lot of things uh, uh, we can we we try. So budding roots is again uh, that kind of a program. And uh, yeah, so next, uh, some new places are coming up. Like I told you, we just came from Arunachal. So we are like uh, going into this, uh, delving into this Monpa belt. Uh, it's in West Kame district. And Monpa is like a very uh, unique tribe of Arunachal. And they have a lot of ancient heritage. Uh, and uh, one of the nomadic, uh, you know, tribes, one of the only nomadic tribes of Northeast. So the Mon we are working with the Nunpa communities of the West coming. So that's something that is coming up new this year. And uh, some of the, and we are trying more programs in the Northeast uh, and trying out more culturally, uh, you know, relevant uh, kind of work that we do. So basically, you are trying out these models that we have established with, uh, you know, well, that is called, yeah, living with the forest and trying out with different communities uh, in different places. So to see you know, what what comes out, you know, it's always interesting. But you'll also do Sikkim. Now, Sikkim is of great interest to the people. So you would you like to say, share what you are doing in Sikkim? So Sikkim, uh, we had uh, done some work in a place called Zongu. Yeah. So, with Yatsu Lepcha and Co. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, as you know, Zongu is like the, it's called a reserved area for the Lepcha. So, Lepcha is like a indigenous uh, people of uh, of the Kalimpong, Darjeeling, and Sikkim Hills. So, they have been here for ever since, you know. And Zongu is like a 
protected land where only lepchas stay and they it's like a sanctuary and they uh, completely protect the land uh, and they have a lot of uh, history of you know conservation and activism also because of the tista dams and that and because you are talking about things in gatso so they all were involved in those activism so uh, this kind of programs are we are also thinking with uh, with the people of songu like uh, how they are protecting that area and about the you know the ancient traditions of the lepchas because lepchas have such a like a rich tradition which is based around nature and they have a very intricate documentation of the nature and the environment around them through like folk tales through their traditions through their practices uh, we had already promoted uh, some one festival called chalum damro last year which is like a orange festival so this year we are planning to uh, showcase more this you know uh, aspects of conservation through maybe similar programs like living with the forest when when is the orange festival in zongu i would love to attend uh, so orange festival usually happened uh, in january uh, but like you know last year uh, there were some significant losses because of the flood yes so so maybe it, uh, this time it was uh, it didn't happen the festival so uh, because it was such a short time and people are still recovering in zongu yes. so maybe next year we are hopeful but there are other festivals uh, that happen in zongu so like lecture like festivals there is namsung there is uh, different different festivals that are relevant to the tribe Can you give us happen. the dates because i i know a lot of our audiences wanted to go to this thing so when do you do the lecture festival uh as of now we are not uh, promoting any uh, lecture festival but namsung festival is there when is it uh, which, which happens in like uh, uh december so it happens in december end okay so it's and, the dance uh, festival if i'm right right it's the dance festival yeah so namsung is basically new year uh for the lepchas so they they follow their own calendar so it's basically uh, like you know uh, what is a losar of the of the tibetan bhutia communities yeah, yeah, yeah. so they have and they have something similar so lepchas have namsung so it's basically like the dates for uh, their you know uh, so what next for you where, where if someone had to follow you all or go what is the next event that you're going to do asar panda yeah, so next important event is coming up on march end this is living with the forest which is happening in sepi in sepi okay sepi. so i'm going to put this down i'm going to ask you to put it in our, put it in our resources so anybody who wants to know how to reach out to you can reach out to you that way okay i'm 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 putting our link of our uh, perfect our website here yeah. so yeah. all the details and updates they can get i'd like to thank you for your very very special time it was a wonderful wonderful experience to learn how you can actually create good and make good yourself so on that note thank you for sharing time thank you arnab and vicky and thank you yash for always holding our hand this is the last of our virtual tours for rise and i must say it's one of our most significant thank you very very much for putting the people in the spotlight and for all the good work you're doing all the villages and communities that you're reaching you've you've created an initiative that not just stirs a deeper understanding of sustainability in the hills but also gives hope to our next generation thank you very very much arna thank you very much vicky again thank you good night yash thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, Sonia. Thank you thank so you much, so Sonia, and uh, and this platform and all the participants who thank had joined you. us today. And thank you for listening to us. And and thank you for the platform. Actually, uh, uh, this is very uh, beautiful plat platform that we you know, that we like you know like uh, uh, that help us to share our stories. And and thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much.